they were making a good wage, they had benefits, they fired them all to bring in temp worker you know, from, a, from a third party cheap labor. So here's where the caught you doing something right part goes on. The Boston Taxi Drivers Association, a union representing 1,700 Boston cab drivers, says that they will not pick up or drop off anybody. <laughs>
but, but mostly it was people like Phyllis Schlafly and Pat Buchanan, and there was, there was a, a small core of them, I frankly don't even remember all their names, but I would immediately recognize them, and all of you would. There was a dozen or so uh, media pundits who were talking in code constantly on local talk radio, because I was working in local radio in the 1960s, and these people would, they, they'd come in as guests, and they, would, and they would talk about states' rights, they would talk about um, how workers' jobs were being taken away and what that meant was white workers' jobs being taken away by African Americans, you know, by the enforcement of civil rights. Uh, they, you know, blockbusting was going on down in Atlanta in the 1960s, um, which, is a, which was a policy where the, the rich, white, land-developing corporations were deciding in advance, this is going to be a black area, this is going to be a white area, and they were making sure that the white, the, the black area was never where they were, or it was never their developments, and Atlanta just got carved up just like it was back in the 1800s. I lived in Atlanta for 13 years. There's uh, 37 B Street streets. Most people even who live in Atlanta don't know why. The reason why is because up until the 1950s, there was a law in the books in Atlanta that said that it was illegal for a person of color to live, work, or walk on Peachtree Street. So every time a new neighborhood that wanted to be a white-only neighborhood was created, they'd run a Peachtree Street through the middle of it. And, and so, anyhow, what was going on in the 1960s was that there was all this dog whistle stuff going on on the, on the radio. And it, it created an atmosphere where people like J.B. Stoner could get out there and raise that money. And, and could hire the mob to hire a, a low-level heroin runner, James Earl Ray, to, to shoot Martin Luther King. And then, you know, guess who was Martin Luther, or guess who was uh, James Earl Ray's lawyer? J.B. Stoner. I mean, you know, and, and he'd travel all over half, half the world, you know, on money from what, from where. And he would lay all this out in our book. And, and when Lamar and I were talking about it, we talked about the fact that there have been, as far as we can tell, at least 20 and maybe as many as 30 serious, credible, out there, and I'm not talking out of school here, um, plots that have been disrupted to assassinate the current president of the United States. And virtually all of them have been racist-based programs. And this is, this is something that all of us are terrified of. And, and I'm frankly very reluctant to even say it out loud on the radio, but it's, it's real, it's happened. There are people that are sitting in jail right now because they've been busted for this. And, and, you know, we all need to hold this man in our prayers, and we all need to be very careful about how we speak. And you're, you're absolutely right. That said, I want to, I would like to, in my own defense, if, if I may, say that he's not only an African American, he's also President of the United States. And as President of the United States, we have to, on issues of policy, we have to be holding this guy's feet to the fire. And, and so, you know, we're, we're all together. Thank you.